What is up my aesthetic boys, it's Fresh, back with another video. Today we have a story time episode of r slash entitled parents featuring r slash choosing beggars and apparently they're all about food so I hope you enjoy. Entitled mom wants to steal my birthday cake. My mother terrifies her kid and her into backing off. So I've recently encountered an entitled mother at Waitrose in the UK. This features me only as a partial spectator and my mum as the victim of this entitled mom, or EM the victim of my mother, in all honesty. Happened over a week ago, but only now getting the time to write it. For some context, all of you here in the UK know that it's a fairly pricey grocery store aimed at upper middle class. Me and my parents rarely go in it unless we have a good coupon or want cakes, as their bakery is utterly delicious and not as pricey as everything else. This happened about a week ago, and recently I had my 21st birthday, and my parents have decided to order a whole rainbow cake as my birthday cake as a treat, which only cost about 20 pounds, or 16 bucks. This cake is always at a high demand, as it's one of their best sellers, meaning that the only way you're likely to get one full is if you order it online or come really early to the store. You simply place an order, and a cake is reserved for you at a date where you can pick it up and pay at the store. Simple enough, right? I know it comes off as a little childish, but the cake is delicious, and I love colors, so heck with it. So it was the day before my birthday, and my parents had driven to town, and I came along for the free ride. And at the end of the day, about 5pm, we headed towards the shop to pick up the cake. By the time we had gotten into the shop and into the little bakery section, we did not see many people around waiting to be served, but we did see a lot of people who had stopped dead in their tracks to watch a lady. I want to say she had the, I want to speak to your manager hair, but she didn't really. She looked like the most common middle-aged blonde with no identifiable taste in clothes, tacky and straight up ugly. The most memorable thing was most likely her massive nails and the freaking infinite amount of rings on her fingers. Tacky fake rings to match her ugly accent. That she waved as she yelled at the employee behind a counter. With her, she had a girl who didn't look over 10 or 12, I can't really tell kids ages anymore in modern times. I heard an audible sigh from my own mother who then rolled her eyes. It was a busy day. As we got closer, this is the conversation I could make out. What do you mean you don't have rainbow cakes? She yelled. I'm sorry ma'am, we're all out for today. We sold our last daily batch at 2pm. Well, go check again, you idiot. I need it for my daughter's birthday. It's special, she elongated words occasionally, as if talking to someone challenged. The child I did not want to pass judgment on until I saw and heard this. The little girl started whining and banging on the counter. It was very tall, so she couldn't reach anything, so instead she banged on the lower half of it, kicking and crying. Mommy, you promised. I want it. I want, want, want it. It was my unicorn. She then emitted this ugly and high-pitched screech that made my back shiver. Ma'am, please calm down. There is nothing I can do for you. Well then, make one! That's what you're here for, aren't you? You lazy cow! This country is going to hell because of you lazy immigrants like you get jobs and do nothing useful! She berated the woman. Not even sure why. The woman at the counter was English and spoke it perfectly. Hell, better than me. Ma'am, you need to calm d Don't tell me what to do, you dirty immigrant! I'm here to spend money! Go make a new one and make use of yourself! I need it today, and no later! Where else do you think I'm going to get a cake for my little princess? By now, the entitled kid was thrashing everything about and dropping things and items of the food and picking them out of her mother's basket and chucking them about in protest. Employee, Ma'am, I'm sorry, but we're unable to start baking anything at this hour. And even if I could, I do not have the time. The EM continued staring at the employee as if she was an alien, speaking in another language. My mom and me are not pleasant people when we're tired. My mother simply shoves past the woman and approaches the counter. Pushing the woman aside, making her gasp, my stepfather standing between my mother and her. Hello, my mom said with a smile as the employee wasn't doing anything wrong. I knew my parents were worried that they may have sold the reserved cake, but my mom decided to ask anyway. Excuse me, I heard you said you ran out, but we reserved a cake and if you still have it, we'd love to pick it up. The employee smiled and said, Oh miss? My mother noted as the entitled mom stared at the interaction. She tried to yell and ask my mom to move, but 
My mom simply ignored her like a bad smell in a large room. The employee proceeds to open a second cabinet and take out a box, open it, and show a full rainbow cake. Wait! You said you didn't have any, you effing liar! Yes, ma'am. We have no available cakes. This was reserved to be picked up at 5 p.m. today. Entitled Mom looks at my mother and tells her with an angry look, Listen here. I was here first. This is my daughter's cake. Give it to me. My little darling has her birthday in two days. Well, this one's for my daughter's birthday tomorrow. You should have ordered it, like I did. The EM looked at me with a disgusted look. You are an adult. What the hell is wrong with you? You're too old for a cake. And you're too old and ugly to throw a tantrum. Excuse me? You heard me. Are you deaf as well as brain challenged? You know that iron look and that moveless turn of the neck where the body stands in one direction like a rock and only the head moves? My mother turned to her and calmly asked in a booming but calm voice, completely ignoring this conversation. Did you order one online? No, but did you wait here? What? But, but you're... I'll take that as an uneducated no. I'm not giving you anything and your spoiled brat can suck it. Learn how to shut your brat's mouth too. Do not tell me how to... The kid was now crying and screeching. My mother turns to the whining kid and yells at her in a booming voice that shook the room. Shut up, you spoiled brat! The kid visibly spooks and turns dead silent, all color drained out of its face. Looking at her with the most terrified look in her eyes, not even crying. Only stared at her like a deer in headlights. My mother turned back to the employee and said with a smile, Will that be 20 pounds? She nodded her head in a yes and thanked her for the payment and ordering the cake online. The entitled mother then suddenly tried to push past mine and grab the cake on the counter. My father's shoulder rose out of reflex to get in the way, but luckily during the conversation and shuffled closer, close enough to harshly step forward towards the gap in between right onto the entitled mom's foot, making her yelp and look down on her broken front heel. You fat bastard, she yelled. I smiled and said, oh, my bad. Shouldn't have gotten in the way. You stepped on me. I'm sure I did, I replied with a smile, and moved away as my mother started walking away. The woman tried to chase after us, but couldn't as she had a small limp and her child just teared up a little. Honestly, maybe that'll teach her a little more humility and an appropriate way to be upset rather than throwing a tantrum. My mother would have crucified me if I ever pulled something like that as a kid. I want to say, I hope that kid learned a lesson and doesn't grow up to be like that, but I highly doubt it. At least I got my cake and had a great birthday and now have a fun story to tell. Well folks, this is probably either the best entitled parent story you've ever heard and you're so glad that her mom put this entitled mom into her place, her rightful place, or we're all watching to the side as the rainbow cake sprouts sponge cake arms and starts clapping for the heroics of the story. Basically, you're either in awe or you're in awe of how absolutely fake most of this sounds. Vote in the poll. Let me know. We need that house more than you because we have kids. A quick vent. Five years ago, my husband and I bought a house. We've been saving for years for the down payment and the stars must have aligned for us to get it. Everything worked out perfectly. The house was a major fixer-upper, but it had land and we were happy with that. Turns out my brother-in-law had looked at the house when it was listed as well. They decided it was too much work to fix up and not worth it. They wanted major upgrades too, whereas my husband and I are very simple people. We don't need granite countertops or a soaking tub or hardwood throughout. Met up with the family recently and brother-in-law was talking about how cramped their condo was now with two kids. Brother-in-law decided this was the time to tell us that we should trade houses. I kid you not. Brother-in-law is very, yes, entitled. Brother-in-law proceeded to argue that we're only two people and their family is growing and could use the space literally suggested that we give ours to him and buy out his condo. I laughed. I knew he was serious, but I couldn't help but laugh. I'd never in my life imagined someone could be so damn entitled that they demand someone giving up their home for the sake of another family. Are you kidding me? Brother-in-law then got mad at me for not even considering it and began justifying all the reasons his family needed our house more. Oh, you think this is the worst part, right? <laughs> no. It gets better. We never finished the basement, so there's only one bathroom in the house. Brother-in-law informed me that if we were to trade houses, 
that we would need to make some major upgrades first because he wouldn't have time to be able to make any renovations. He was somehow inexplicably certain that I would see the logic in this plan and just trade houses with them because they needed the extra space so much more. And now my brother-in-law isn't talking to me because I laughed through the whole thing and wouldn't take him seriously. Win-win. Go ahead. Punish me by not talking to me. At least then you'll stop trying to make me the bad guy because I have two spare rooms I don't use. My husband and I each have an office. And tell everyone how horrible I am because I wouldn't buy out their condo at market value while giving you our house out of the goodness of our hearts. Last I know, he was now trying to tell my father-in-law to retire and move into the city so that they could have the farm. Joke's on him. Father-in-law already talked about it and has left the farm to me and my husband in his will. Because we actually farm, and brother-in-law thinks it's too much work. I always thought the internet exaggerated that people like this exist. I thought situations like this couldn't possibly be real. What the hell are these people thinking? Well, the simple answer to the question, what are they thinking, is... Well, they aren't thinking. That's kind of how we got here in the first place. You don't have to eat it. Short story that happened in my job today. At my job, we have a window where people approach us for the items they need. It could be anything from grease to gears to tools. I started bringing candy into work and stuffing a basket with candy. Depending on the type, the candy can be $1 to $7 a bag, and usually I get an assortment. Kit Kats, Snickers, Milky Ways, Nerds, etc. This is not a sponsored video, mind you. Since Easter is coming up, I found some relatively cheap but good tasting decorated egg lollipops. About $2 a bag with 20 in each bag. A few weeks, I realized what was happening to the candy. People would see the candy they liked, pick out all of it, and walk off when I was doing other tasks in the back. To remedy this, I started counting out the candy to make it last longer. 15 pieces every two days. It worked, too. People took less candy. Keep in mind, I pay for the candy with the money I get from my job. I don't have to do this. I choose to because sometimes a piece of candy can really help a stressful day. I like seeing people smile and it gives me a chance to talk to a few of them. I also tend to come off as harsh because I'm direct when I talk, so the candy buffers people who are sensitive to that unfortunate trait I have. Today, I noticed that due to the hot weather and humidity, some of the lollipops I mentioned were becoming brittle or melting. I decided it was best to put all of them out and buy more once they were gone. Everyone really liked them, so of course, when I got in, a majority of them were gone. Except for three. These three were cracked. One so badly that I opted to toss it in the trash. Otherwise, I risk having tiny pebbles go all over the counter when someone opened it. Two left. One blueberry and one strawberry. They were both cracked, but still attached to the stick. Cue Bob. Yeah, candy. Looks in the basket. Where the candy at? Sir, it's in the basket. Oh, you mean I gotta eat one of these? They're cracked. You don't have to eat them. <laughs> For real? You can't just go get some? I don't want one that's cracked. I realize now that he doesn't understand. There aren't any more. I see you pull them out of the drawer. Just go get another one that isn't broken. No one's gonna want this trash. I don't have any more. I buy candy every two weeks. That's everything. Then let me look in the drawer. The drawer is a personal item drawer. My personal drawer. I keep mostly papers, but I do have a small box where I keep the candy for others and a few that my coworkers like. One of my coworkers is a diabetic, and after she asked if I could get sugar-free, I started buying her favorite for her. At this point, I'm more irritated than anything, and then I remembered. A few weeks ago, I bought sour lollipops. No one liked them as much as the ones I have now, but it would at the very least get him to go away. Well, the only other one I have is one I was saving for my break. It isn't like the ones in the basket. Well, you can have one of the broken ones. Now I'm thinking, he is officially an asshole and he deserves this. Okay. I grab a sour one and hand it to him. He unwraps it and starts to walk away after shoving it in his mouth. I lean over the counter to get a better look and he stopped dead in his tracks a foot away. He does this weird shimmy move and tosses the lollipop into a trash can before exiting the building. His sour attitude got him a sour treat. If something's free, be nice. You don't have to take it if you don't want it, but certainly don't complain about it. How to turn four free donuts into zero. So this happened a great many years ago at my very first job. I worked drive through at Krispy Kreme Donuts. Our store had just opened and was the second in the state, so we were busy with lines out the door from day one. For those who don't know, Krispy Kreme's big draw is the hot light. 
When the neon orange sign is on, you can come in and get a free original style donut, no purchase required. The first month we were open, the hot light was almost always on. In the first week, management started to notice scammers. They would come inside for a free donut and then go through our drive through and get another, usually without making any purchases. It happened enough to become a problem, so we solved it by only giving out free donuts if you came inside. We put up a sign in front of the drive through saying to come inside for your free donut so that no one got any unhappy surprises after waiting in a long line. This didn't stop people from trying to get a free one through the drive through Our boss allowed us to make minor exceptions at our discretion. If someone made a gigantic order or was handicapped, etc., we would still give a donut if they asked. One day, a minivan came through and ordered one or two donuts. They came up asking for their free ones as well. Sorry, but our policy is that you must come inside for the free donuts. Oh, please. We don't want to have to get our kids out of the car. They shifted in their seats, and sure enough, there were two small children in car seats. I decided to make the exception for them and grabbed four hot donuts. CBs beamed. The kids were happy. And then they ruined it. Um, actually, we have five more kids at home. Can we get donuts for them too? No, I can't give away donuts to people that aren't here. I don't have to give you these ones, but I wanted to be nice. Choosing beggars now scowling. We want to speak to the manager about this. I shrugged and was happy to let someone else deal with these people so I could get back to my increasingly long drive through line. I tell the manager exactly what was going on. He came over to talk to them. Manager, I'm sorry, this seems to be a misunderstanding. CB smiles smugly at me. As per policy, we don't give out any free donuts in the drive through You're welcome to come inside and we'll give one to each person that's present. Manager took the hot donuts still in my hands and put them back on the line shut the window on the CBs, and walked away. He was as sick of beggars as the rest of us. Choosing beggars flipped me off and drive away angrily. Needless to say, they didn't come inside for their freebie. I don't know. To be completely honest, if you're too lazy to get a free donut that you won't even walk inside the store, you don't deserve the free donut. Not even that the store shouldn't have to give it to you, you don't personally deserve that free donut. Thank you to everyone who watched this video. Be sure to subscribe for more daily Reddit content. Drop a like if you like the video, and I will see you all tomorrow.